Hey there, I'm Jen. Hearing you're having some back pain today. Yeah, well, I am actually not wearing a white coat today. Um, white coats are actually mostly for show and they spread disease. So I figured, why even bother with the pretense? We're here to help you find strategies to get better. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look at you. Let me just sanitize my hands here real quick. So how long have you been having back pain for? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any fever? Okay. Any issues, um, any exposure recently to people who had meningitis or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Do you live in a military complex, in a prison, um, in a home with, you know, many, many people all together in a homeless shelter? Okay. These are relevant questions. Yeah, actually, um, it's because your there are a couple red flag signs that I want to make sure to weed out, make sure that don't happen. So let me just get the hand sanitizer up here, and then you can have some too if you like. Yeah, I like the sound. Don't you like the sound? It's a good sound. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, so here's the deal. I'm gonna ask you a couple more questions. Enter your information here into my database, um, and uh, I'm gonna make sure to do a little exam. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you some real tips and tricks and little things that you can try or that you can ask your own physician about. Yeah, because I am a real physician, um, but obviously nothing I say here can be for diagnosis or treatment of any kind of illness out in meat space because you and I are meeting here in this secret place, right? And um, well, you know, you got to get things cleared through your personal physician. Yeah, exactly. But I think that we can get you some help and information, especially if you've been having back pain that's making you kind of miserable. And my hope is now, um, I, my, my hope is that we can, uh, like, have you heard of ASMR? Yeah. Well, I was thinking while we're kind of in this little place where, you know, they can't get us or judge us anyway. There's a couple of nice sounds that we can listen to while I go ahead and examine you. Huh? No? That's cool. We'll just, we'll just get right into it. All right. So, um, tell me, uh, have you had any limb weakness where all of a sudden your limbs are drooping and, and don't work? So, I mean, like your arm just like dropping, leg dropping out from under you, anything like that? Okay. Um, how about, uh, have you had any, um, yeah, exactly. Have you had any loss of bowel or bladder movement? By loss, I mean, like, um, you suddenly, um, suddenly just let it all go. Suddenly let the urine, let something, something out, just out all of a sudden. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That would be a red flag sign, uh, for a spinal cord impingement. Um, on a more serious level, something called cauda equina, where the lower part of your spinal cord is getting, like, you know, pinched off in, in not a good times way. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, it is getting a little laid out. I figure that's the perfect time to do our secret medical exams, huh? <laughs> um, so I have a few more questions for you, and actually I want to put them in here. Uh, how old are you again? I know the we already got that stuff at the beginning. We got your blood pressure and everything, but okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, so when we, the reason I was asking you kind of those basically red flag signs, um, fever tends to indicate things like, oh, you know, do we have any kind of infection in your, in your spine? Like that would be a bad thing. Um, I, I had a patient one time, a young pediatric patient who actually had an inspect infection that like, um, was like in the root of her or it was it was kind of a um, like an osteomyelitis, but in the in the bones basically of her spine, and that's obviously a bad 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 sign. Um, and of course, things like meningitis, other stuff like that, that would be um, obviously obviously very concerning. So, um, and then uh, yeah, so I mentioned cauda equina syndrome. Um, things like fracture. Go ahead and do a quick check for it. Um, did the pain start suddenly? Anything happen when the pain began? No? Okay. Excellent. So we'll just kind of put 
put some of this stuff in my little computer here. Okay. Well, let's start a quick little exam. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, have you had this back pain like this before? Like chronic back pain all the time? Yeah. Yeah, so like if somebody has back pain, um, sometimes you can have a sharp pain that starts while you're working. And then the question is, right, do we worry about like a disc herniation? Um, disc herniation will sometimes make it even difficult to like move around um, and things like that because it'll be so severe. Um, but you can also have really, really severe muscle spasms that come from a strain or a sprain actually is what it would be um, of the musculature that run along your back um, of your paraspinals. Yeah, exactly. Those can be pretty, that can be pretty uncomfortable. Um, need to rewash my hands here again. <laughs> Just sanitize, hand sanitize, hand sanitize. I shouldn't be touching my face. Um, so yeah, exactly. So those are some kind of things that can happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, additionally, there are things like piriformis syndrome or other issues where, like, constant overuse or underuse of certain muscles can cause pain in certain areas. Yeah, exactly. Having, um, one of the best things is, like, if you have a well-strengthened core, and I'm gonna have to sanitize again, I keep touching myself. <laughs> um, having a really strengthened core can help to protect your back as well. Uh, but let's do our little exam here. So, the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do may seem, like, not, um, back-related, Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, actually, let's start. Let's start like this. Let me come around behind you, and I'm just going to feel for what I call vertebral tenderness, okay? And so I'm just going to come along this side and kind of feel along your spine here. Yeah, just along this side. And what I'm feeling for is specifically if you have pain on on the actual bone. And you gotta be, and what I'm looking for is tenderness. That's different than like, um, so if you report pain to me, if you tell me you have pain, that's one thing, that's the subjective experience of pain. Um, tenderness is more objective. It's like what I can see when your body, you flinch away or how you respond to pain. Yeah, exactly. And that gives me a little bit more information about kind of what's going on. Yeah. Um, can you do me a favor? And I'd like to see you twist to one side. Exactly. And then can you twist to the other side? Okay. Perfect. Um, and then can you just lean back as far as you can? Okay. And then forward as far as you can. Okay, perfect. And then twist. And then twist. Okay, can I see you rotate your neck gently? Alright, and then put your hands up like this. And then put them behind you like this. Okay. And then neck down like this. Neck down like this. Neck forward. And neck back. Okay. Which direction is most uncomfortable? Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Alright. That's good to know. Okay. And then, um, so it looks like there's no obvious signs of trauma, for example. Um, I'm going to have you close your eyes and I'm going to touch your extremities and you're going to point to where I'm poking. Okay? Yeah, it's like a children's game. Alright, go ahead and close your eyes. All right, do you, what do you feel here? All right, can you point? Perfect. How about over here? All right, can you point to that area? Perfect, and then how about down here? Awesome, and then point there. And then over here? Point there, perfect. You don't feel like you've lost any kind of sensation. Okay, from that exam, objectively, you have intact sensation in those areas. Yeah, okay, perfect. I note these things down here. And then um, I want to test your L3. That's your hip flexion. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm putting my hand on your knee and I want you to lift it up. Because mm -hmm. what I'm testing is the hip, not the knee. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and lift up. 
Awesome. And then the other side. Awesome. And that's because I'm looking for those nerve roots, that L3 nerve root. Yeah, exactly. Just take note of that. And then with your knee, um, I want you to extend your knee, kick it out. Just don't kick me. <laughs> Perfect. And then other side. Excellent. All right. Yeah, that's L4, which makes sense, right? Three, because the hips, and then four, going down to the knees. We are going to test L5 next. And you're right, it is going to be in the foot. Not the foot, it's actually the great toe. Yeah. So I'm going to put my fingers on your big toe, and I want you to move them up. Yeah, both different big toes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, go ahead and push up. Excellent. Okay. Get a little bit of my tighter here. And then S1 is your first sacral. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be plantar flexion. This is dorsiflexion, this is plantar flexion of your foot. So I just want you to push down with your foot. Perfect. All right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So let's just... Okay. The next thing is we'll do a couple reflexes. And these ones, uh, for the back, you know, you're, a lot of times you're worried about the low rat back. We can do reflexes all over, though. So one reflex that I do up here is I do this one which is, which you, I'd have to hold and support your arm, which is what we do. And what I'm looking for is to see if it pops out like this. And there's another one here where I'll hit here along this muscle. And I want to see what happens here. And then your biceps also should cause your arm to start to supinate a little bit. Mm -hmm. So those are the upper reflexes. And then of course in the lower, it's the knee. And then the back of the foot, like you know how your foot is an L like that? The Achilles tendon right there. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's start off here on this side, okay? You just like relax, just drop your arm down on. Yeah, I usually don't say relax because it's not so helpful. Just like drop your arm, let it fall, make it heavy. Perfect, and then I'm gonna hold your arm this way, okay? And just on your biceps tendon, perfect. And then you break your radialis, perfect. All right, other arm. And again, I just want you to drop that arm down like you're making it heavy. Excellent. And then down over here. Yep, biceps tendon. Don't look at it. Look, it helps if you look away. Yeah, and then break your radialis. Perfect. And then your knee. And everyone knows the knee reflex. They always kind of try to do it ahead of time. Don't do that. Don't cheat. <laughs> Just kind of lean way back and relax, okay? Okay. And then over here. Perfect. And then I'm going to get your Achilles tendon back down here. Awesome, and back down here. Wonderful. All right, so we'll take note of that. That is excellent. The next test is a little weird. It's called a straight leg raising test. Mm -hmm. And I'll do it um, lying down or sitting up. We can actually do it lying down. There's a little trick when you, or sorry, sitting up. There's a little trick when you do it sitting up that actually it also helps to find out if a patient is malingering. But I'm not gonna tell you what that trick is. <laughs> Cause then if your doctor needs to use it, if you're ever malingering. They, you will know the trick, but there is actually a trick we can use to figure out, um, like, yeah. All right, so I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to come over to this side again, and I just am going to kind of help raise your leg up, okay? Over here on this side, just raise your leg up. Here, I'm going to come over to this side of you. Perfect. Go ahead and do that there. And then I was watching your gait when you came in, it looked pretty good too. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, a lot of times when I do these back exams on people, I will also do a little bit of osteopathic manipulation therapy. Not everyone does that. Um, most MDs do are not qualified in that. Um, I got some extra, you know, special little credentials to pick it up. Um, but usually the kind of doctor you want to go to for something like that is going to be a doctor of osteopathy, a DO. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of like chiropractic, um, but a little gentler, a little, um, it's really the parent that chiropractic came off of. Chiropractic school really kind of broke off of osteopathy um, when people wanted to do, um, I'm going to do a little tapping if that's okay with you. 
but people wanted to do um, mostly only the cracking. Not that cat factors only crack, but that's kind of their signature thing. It's called HVLA, high velocity. Yeah, exactly, you're already familiar with it. Um, so they want to do HVLA only. But um, osteopaths also do a lot of soft tissue techniques. Myofascial release, muscle energy. Um, BLT is my favorite one, uh, which is balanced ligamentous technique, not bacon, lettuce, and tomato. <laughs> uh, and uh, a couple other techniques. Um, counter strain is a really is one that's really really effective. Um, and so I've been studying and learned a lot of these techniques. And at some point we could have a session um, where I teach you kind of what to expect or kind of like do some on you. Yeah, exactly. So it's something to look for to help for back pain. Um, given what you've got going on, it really does seem like you have a pretty significant paraspinal uh, muscle strain, right? You have a lot of back pain. Um, posture obviously hurts that as well um, from these muscles being like stretched out when you're working either really quickly because you didn't warm up um, or just over time like if you're sitting hunched at a computer you're stretching those muscles out and really straining them and tearing them um, and hurting them right yeah um, and so there's a lot of different ways to help with that especially lower back pain some people have problems um, with their lower back pain for other reasons yeah there's, there's a lot of reasons someone might have back pain um, for sure uh, so I actually have some handouts for um, lower back pain exercises, yeah, that you can download right below. Yeah, no, that doesn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to really help. Um, and other things to consider in addition to trying to get an OMT appointment. Um, so NSAIDs can be helpful. NSAIDs are things like ibuprofen and those things like that, but you don't want to be taking them chronically because they can really hurt your belly. Um, so I actually recommend people to take turmeric, um, 500 milligrams three times a day or 1500 milligrams a day because there was a large series of studies um, and I actually wrote an HDA uh, about this in FPIN, which is a um, medical publication. Um, but you can look up, there's a number on PubMed, pubmed.gov, and you'll find a lot of studies there were predominantly for knee pain, uh, for knee arthritis and turmeric, um, but there's information on back pain as well. Uh, and some of the information isn't as high quality as others. I would give it pretty much, I think I gave it a B or a C level evidence. Um, but for the lack of side effects, I mean, sometimes turmeric, um, or sorry, curcuminoids, um, sometimes they can give you a little bit of diarrhea, right? And that's it. And unlikely um, to happen. Versus like NSAIDs can cause internal bleeding if you take ibuprofen and naproxen all the time, right? So. I prefer to focus on things like realignment, like with osteopathy, um, and things like turmeric. Um, however, um, oh, imaging. So back imaging is actually fairly useless. Um, it's it's every decade. So if at in your fifties, about fifty percent of people with no back pain will have back findings on MRI. Um, once you get to your nineties, about ninety percent of people who don't have a severe back pain will still have positive, like everybody will have findings on MRI at that age, whether you have pain or not. Um, so it doesn't really correlate to your actual pain. Um, and so that can be kind of useless. Yeah. The reason we do MRI is if we're thinking about surgery. Yeah. And the reason we want to think about surgery is like if you're having one of those red flag signs, like those limb dro droopings, um, or if you're having tingling out in your hands or down your legs, um, then that indicates that you might have some kind of impingements, but there's other things that can be done about that. Yeah, because you can have injections um, from pain medicine, other kinds of things like that. Yeah, to kind of like loosen up that space. Sometimes that space gets a little squished. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not talking about the central spinal cord. I'm talking about your nerves that go out to your back. You can have what's called a radicular pain, where the nerves that are leaving the spinal cord going out to the back can get squished a little bit on um, your, you know, your vertebrae are shaped like this, and sometimes these little bones that are stabbing out can squish or bother those. Yeah, squishing your spinal cord is like that other red flag stuff I was talking about. Yeah, it sounds like the trash guy is uh, at work down the hall. You'll forgive me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so those, you know, like when we want surgery and we want to figure out where to do it exactly what's going on that's when we're looking at MRIs that those kind of red flag signs are getting worse or um, I will sometimes get an MRI early 
um, if I'm looking for information, um, and this is purely administrative for like military reasons, like if I want to know um, if somebody has um, uh, like a herniated disc from a military injury. Yeah, exactly. In that case, then I would want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so x-rays aren't going to show you very much unless there's a sign of a fracture, right, which is what we are feeling for in the back. There's something called step off when I press it on your back. If there's like a, like the bone drops down or moves the side, that's a no-no, that's a bad time. That's different than when I'm feeling your back for osteopathic lesions, which is um, like those, what the chiropractor would call maybe misalignment. Um, then I'm just feeling for the ways in which your bones have like shifted a little bit. It takes a long time to learn that and it's not, um, those are not like red flag signs, but like a real shift that you would be able to feel not having had that kind of training, that's like, a, you know, that's a, like, you broke your back, like, very serious, um, that's a different thing entirely. Yeah, exactly. So, the other thing, um, yeah, so that, so we kind of talked about imaging, I hope that made some sense. Yeah, exactly. So, basically, my flow is, um, we start with some physical therapy, physical exercise you can do at home, um, they have found that rest, like bed rest, is not very helpful for back injuries. What's helpful is gentle motion and movement. Sometimes it's helpful to wear a back brace to like strengthen and support the muscles of your back. Um, and ab exercises are really helpful so that your belly is strengthening and protecting your back. OMT is helpful. Acupuncture is helpful. Um, things that really help to strengthen and help that muscle to heal. A TENS unit is also helpful. That's something you can look into. Um, but things that focus on helping the muscle heal. That's again why I like turmeric. Um, NSAIDs, if necessary, right? Um, I don't like muscle relaxers, but do prescribe them sometimes for like someone who has severe chronic spasms and because what muscle relaxers really do is they work centrally. So really what they're doing is like just depressing your whole nervous system and kind of almost like knocking you out a little bit. Um, and so they're kind of a scam in some ways. They're not really going down to the root of the problem. So I want to go to things that fix the root of the problem and then the symptomatic things like with NSAIDs or muscle relaxers is later. What I do before those things, um, if I do use an NSAID, I like Voltaren gel because it's a gel you can put on the outside. So even though it is absorbed into your bloodstream, you don't have as much of that effect in your belly where you have the risk of bleeding over time. Yeah. An NSAID is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, popping ibuprofen all the time is just, you know, they, we call it, they call it ranger candy in the army because it's like what you give everybody. <laughs> you give everybody ranger candy. Yep. I'm going to touch my face now since I'm not touching you anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the story with NSAIDs. Um, let's see, what else do you need to know? What other questions do you have for me? Yeah, so after I start with like going to the root of the problem, um, a couple things that you can ask your physician about, um, besides Voltaren gel, um, which you can use your, um, uh, Tiger Balm, Icy Hot, and those kind of things are also helpful, um, any kind of menthol rub on your back, but lidocaine patches, some people find very helpful. If you're very active, not as helpful because you can sweat it off. Yeah, exactly. Um, but can, that can be a useful adjunct for back pain. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond that, let's see. Um, so when all of those things have failed, then usually I'll send someone to pain management um, to see about getting injections in the spine. And when that's failed is when you start looking at a surgeon. The problem is um, it's back surgeries. You have a 50% chance of the pain getting worse after surgery. <laughs> So it's really a bad coin flip, um, especially because, you know, you can die when you're under surgery. This is, we don't just cut people open. Um, so surgeries are usually like a conscientious surgeon won't operate on you unless you're starting to have some of those red flag signs, like limb weakness, drooping, you're having trouble gripping stuff, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Let me make sure that there's nothing else on my list here, and then I think that you might be good to go. Um... We did all this good stuff. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. We talked about the side effects. 
We talked about staying active. We talked about physical therapy. I always have a list here because I don't think it's fair to you if I rely only on my fallen human memory, right? So I know the things that happen on my memory, but I also like to always have it written down. Um, we talked about ONT. Yeah, so we talked about fractures, that's differential diagnosis. We talked about herniations. Um, a herniation, sometimes a severe herniation, you just have to get a surgery. Um, herniation is when the two spinal like bones have squished and the squishy stuff in between is like squishing out and that's really painful and sometimes when squishing out is crushing a nerve that's coming out um, and a lot of times those are cases where you'll have sporadic limb weakness or something like that yeah other times um you know and then so for sometimes people have such severe pain that they're willing to take that 50 50 coin flip of it could get worse it can happen um and then um sometimes there's like inflammatory diseases and things like that mm -hmm. does it get better when you're sitting okay when you're like bending over or hunched over like a shopping cart that's usually an older person disease type thing um and sometimes there's like inflammatory diseases or abdominal disease or other disease that can feel like back pain but then you'll have some of these other signs yeah exactly so i think we've got everything um, like I said, I have a real actual handout to help you with back pain below for exercises you can do. And then you should try asking your physician about some of those things. Voltaren or Diclofenac gel um, is phenomenal. Lidocaine. Um, one thing I try a lot for back pain that is um, neuropathic, although now that I'm leaving the military, I won't be able to prescribe it anymore because um, you have to have a DEA number to prescribe this. But um, you can ask your physician about Lyrica or Gabapentin. Gabapentin tends to make you a little dizzier. Lyrica or pregabalin, um, a little bit less, but gabapentin is cheaper, um, and Lyrica can be harder to obtain. They're both from the same metabolite, um, and what they do is they just kind of tell your nerves to shut up, and they go directly to the kind of nerve area instead of working on a central, um, like what they do is they work on all of the nerves instead of working on a central mediator that then tells everything to shut up. Yeah. Things you want to avoid. You want to avoid opioids, um, because not only are they addicting, um, but unless you've had like a recent surgery, um, they actually aren't helpful in the long run because what happens is um, Your mu receptors are very sensitive to flooding So your mu receptors are the things that feel that you know, you're getting your opioid burst um, and if they get um, too much then your body starts to make more mu receptors your body's like oh there's so much opioid here I need more mu receptors to feel it all and then you have more mu receptors and then they're not all flooded and so then you're gonna have when you take away the opioid you're gonna have more pain because you have more little little receptors like waiting and uh, begging for stuff so i hope i don't know if that makes sense you see my little finger picture yeah so basically you don't want to upregulate your creation of your receptors and have more receptors so that you need then more and more opioid in order to fill all of them and you end up having pretty severe pain when you withdraw from that. Yeah, so not good long term. Not a good option. Um, and then pain psychology can help. I did a video on pain psychology, um, and we're going to do more. Yeah. So in the future, we'll do an OMT video together, OMT session, and a pain psychology session together, where we're kind of going to talk about that stuff. I'm not a pain psychologist, um, but I have the resources available for you. All right. Well, I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you for coming by, and definitely please grab that handout and um, take care of yourself. Alright, good night.